All right. So, hey, good afternoon. Again, my name is Don German. I'm the plant manager here for U.S. Steel Mon Valley and also the project lead for our uh, bald eagle camera here on uh, plant property. I'm here today with uh, Carol Hol Holmgren from uh, Tamarack Wildlife Center, TWC. And uh, we're going to have our reveal uh, party. As you can see, Carol is in blue. I am in pink. And at the end of the uh, broadcast here, I have results that will uh, open up and, uh, and uh, we'll figure that out. Maybe one of us will stand uh, based on the results. But um, obviously before we go in, uh, Carol, uh, it's been a week and really wanted to see how four is doing and any updates that you, uh, that you may have. So I know you sent me some pictures and uh, some videos. So um, why don't uh, you wanna go through those and, and, and we'll, and you can go ahead from here. That sounds fantastic. I'm thrilled to report that USS4 is doing well and stabilized. We've um, done a lot of examination and diagnostics to develop a treatment plan. And right now we're really um, giving four opportunities to um, practice some life skills while we wait for feathers to grow in. But let's take a look at a few of the photos that depict um, aspects of FOR's treatment. So first you'll see one of our interns restraining FOR and um, part of what makes us specialists in bald eagles is that we have equipment and no techniques to help reduce that eagle's stress during treatment. So you'll notice that USS FOR is wearing a hood that has to be um, fitting well, and then that tends to take away their vision, which um, helps reduce stress and also will um, hit some pressure points causing relaxation. And if this eagle were being held vertically, you'd actually think that we drugged it because that head would drop down and touch its chest, but it's not. It's just relaxed because it's got a properly fitting hood on it. And then you'll notice that our intern is wearing gloves and a leather jacket to keep herself safe. So that's where it starts is uh, good, good patient care. And then we can proceed with the examination. So um, among the things that we were looking at were um, the wings, especially the feather condition and comparing one side to the other. And clearly we had some feather damage to, um, to be addressed, but we also needed to do some diagnostics to help us sort out um, what's, um, what was FOR's physical condition. We needed to do some blood work to assess that. And also, are there any diseases that may lurking that, um, are, that we need to be concerned about? So we did do some blood work both in-house and sent out for um, more detailed analysis. And something that's new this week is that we have the, um, the lab work that we sent out. And basically it's not that exciting, which makes me a very happy person. So I'll take not exciting results any day of the week. And the, our in-house blood work had indicated that there were markers for mild stress or mild infection, but nothing that we needed to treat with drugs or um, get too concerned about and certainly four had been through some stressful experiences. So uh, the blood work was really consistent with that. We also tested for blood lead because eagles of all ages can have issues with that. And happily US4 um, had background levels for lead toxicity. So those were um, important things for us to look at for determining our treatment. One of the things that was nice about USS4 is that we knew how old the bird was, given that this was a very famous eagle that we were working with. Um, oftentimes with young eagles, we actually rely on a feather measurement of a nestling or young bald eagle and can get a pretty good guess about the age based on that feather development, as long as it's in blood still growing in um, and that helps us make some decisions about how we treat the bird, whether we treat it as a nestling or is it developmentally more of a fledgling. So aging a young eagle is an important part of its care as well. And then we moved on to just for funsies, 
do we have an idea about whether we're working with a male or a female? That doesn't really um, impact our care, except we might increase the diet a little bit for, for a female, since that's going to be larger. And so we have a picture showing measurement of, um, of the beak. And then we also did a measurement of the foot. And what we're looking for in, in this is um, correlating the foot with the beak measurement. And we're relying on some data that came from the Saskatchewan. And I'll mention why, why are we using Saskatchewan data for eagles in a minute. But um, in this study, they found that the boys had um, narrow beaks and smaller feet, whereas the female very clearly had larger feet um, longer feet and a deeper beak measurement. So usually if we take these measurements, we have a pretty good idea whether we're dealing with a, a male or whether we're dealing with a female. USS-4 was a little bit tricky because USS-4 has a small foot and a deep beak. And since we were sending out blood work, we said, well, let's go ahead and do a, a sex test on this bird um, just because we were a little bit curious. Now, the reason we can use Saskatchewan data is that many of our eagles actually are descendants from Saskatchewan birds. In the 60s and 70s, we were using a lot of the chemical DDT on agricultural crops, not realizing that that DDT was persistent and in the environment and would get into the bodies of fish, would go into streams, concentrate in the bodies of fish, or um, end up in the bodies of small birds. And then when those birds or fish were consumed by our top predators, such as eagles and peregrines, those birds would be affected and not be able to reproduce. The end result is that eagles, um, uh, we had a population crash of both eagles and peregrines, at the lowest, we had only three nests, uh, nesting pairs of eagles in all of Pennsylvania. They happened to be in Crawford County where I work. And in the 70s, when the eagles were declared endangered and DDT was banned for agricultural use in, in the United States, then we started a repopulation effort, which was very exciting. And where did the eagles come from to repopulate our Pennsylvania birds? They took nestlings from the Saskatchewan. So most of our pair, most of our bald eagles here are descendants from Saskatchewan birds. Um, but as eagle populations have recovered, we do have some other bloodlines flowing in. A few years ago, we treated a banded bald eagle from Florida, who as an adult had made his home here. And we know that Florida, Florida eagles and eagles from some other parts of the US are smaller. So it makes me wonder maybe USS-4 um, has some mixed bloodlines, um, given that this is the first eagle I've met that doesn't fit nicely on my graph. <laughs> but that's why we're doing those measurements and why we uh, sent out the blood sample, because uh, it wasn't clear. Yeah, you, you know, you were saying um, about went from three nests, and I think I read that now we're up to over 430 nests in Pennsylvania. I know a lot of work that you do, the, a lot of work that the Pennsylvania Game Commission does, uh, has really brought the you know this back to where I believe now it's still protected um, uh, raptor same as the as the peregrine um, and, and really thriving and I think I almost read that it was at, uh, at one point in the 90s 30,000 um, uh, eagles and now population 70,000 in the lower 48 states not counting um, obviously Alaska because they thrive there but uh, really have made a, a huge comeback and that that's really great uh, to you know to see so I think we had some videos so do maybe we show the one video and you can talk about uh, you know what, what's on that sure so um, the first video shows USS4 in um, the aviary where this bird is, is being housed now. Initially, all patients are um, have very small accommodations in an intensive care unit. As USS-4 became stable, then more room is important. And so this is depicting the eagle in the aviary. And we make sure that the perching and all the furniture, everything in that aviary is designed for that specific patient. So you'll see we've got a variety of 
perches low to the ground since USS4 can't get up to high perches and it would be dangerous. Um, the bird might injure itself attempting to get to high perches. So we've got a variety of lower perches and some of those you'll see are on a pulley that allow for movement and that gives the bird um, practice with balance and also exercises the core muscles. So without even realizing it, USS4 is doing physical therapy um, as well as practicing pouncing, targeting skills. And then there are also some, some toys in there again that can promote um, pouncing, grabbing, um, extra sticks, um, an area to bathe. So those are all important life skills for USS4. I think I need one of those perches to work on my core. core <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we have another video that uh, had, um, you know, just, you know, a four talking and so forth. So maybe mm -hmm. we'll show that. Yep. Yep. So um, USS4 is a talkative bird. Most of our eagles, um, once they move into outdoor aviaries, do become ta talkative. So this vi video makes me happy as a rehabilitator because I can see from the bird's um, posture as well as these calls, um, a, a sense of relaxation. And this is a chatter call. So pretty common for one for us to hear when an eagle is in rehab. So I guess, you know, some questions are coming in, but, um, and, and we've taken some questions. Uh, the yeah. Are they with, is four with other eagles so that it can, you know, maybe talk or, or, you know, or is it not at that point or when does it get to that point where you interact them with maybe other eagles? Sure. That's a great question. If I had another adult eagle or an eagle similar age, I would certainly be co-housing at this point. Um, sometimes that can be a little tricky if one bird is ready for higher perching than the others. Then we kind of have to find find a balance, make sure nobody's hurting themselves. But um, USS4 is a candidate to co-house, and that is something that we will be watching going forward. Um, before too long, I'm going to be, we're, we want some company for USS4. We are coming into a season where we are likely to be admitting more eagles. Sadly, in the last week, I've um, admitted two that were not, had injuries that were not survivable. Um, so that's that's the tough tough thing is that sometimes I, I get in birds that just can't can't make it. But we are hopeful that we will get an eagle that can be a good companion to US four uh, for a while. If we get into the fall and and we still don't have a companion eagle um, to co house with for a while, then we may look into um, other alternatives. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so uh, before we do the reveal, uh, what's future? What does you know treatment look like, and what what uh, maybe I know I get asked a lot on chat. How do we get updates? You know, um, maybe the Facebook page, or you know, how how can they follow you know follow uh, the recovery for? Sure, sure. So right now in treatment, we're in a little bit of a waiting game. We're waiting for those tail feathers to um, start growing in, and that can take a while. And we're also waiting for the wing feathers to complete growth in that um, the outermost feathers, 10, 9, 8, 7, are still in blood. So, you know, over the coming weeks, those will fully grow in and that blood supply will recede. And then we will make a decision about when to consider an an imping procedure so that USS4 can hopefully start doing some more flight. But it is a waiting game and sometimes birds in rehabilitation will have a little bit slower feathery growth in response to the stressful experience that they've been in, been through. So, um, you know, time, time will tell, USS4 will tell us when the time is to, to do those next procedures. But it, we are still looking at um, likely a year before being able to release. If you're interested in updates, check out our Facebook page at Tamarack Wildlife Center, and periodically we'll be sharing what's what's going on with USS4 going forward. Cool. So I know you talked about a little bit about peregrines. So just a little tidbit, um, our Claritin plant, which is 1.8 miles from my facility, 
actually had a pair of peregrines uh, this year that um, hatched three, and I, I don't know, it's not eaglets, so it's three chicks, I guess, and they fledged successfully. So uh, uh, Mike Rhodes, who is our plant manager down there, is very proud uh, papa of, of those three. So uh, we were really, really excited. And, and I think that it's just awesome that we have America's bird, right? And when you look at, you know, U.S. Steel mined, melted, and made in America, and to have this iconic bird, taking residence on our property is just, it is, it's beautiful. And I, I just, I love the fact this camera has brought so much joy to not only my workers, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be around the plant and and I can't tell you how many people ask me about the, you know, um, four and, and just the pair, but the, to the community, to really, quite frankly, the world. I mean, we're, we've been in many countries. People view this this uh, camera, and it's, it's just wonderful that we brought so much joy, and to me, because <laughs> I, I, I truly love, uh, you know, uh, this project and um, what it's done for, uh, for myself and, and family as well. So I guess without further ado, I have do have the results, and you notice that uh, Carol has the blue on because that's her scrubs. And so she called me and said, hey, you need to put the pink on. And um, so it is, I guess, a drum roll. It's a girl. Woo <laughs> so, so USS4 is, is a female, and, and we're very proud of that. And it's so funny because on chat it just finished. I think 76% of the people out there voted for male, not that they wanted a male, but just based on the data thought it was a male. And, yeah. and uh, fortunately it is a strong steel female that's uh, that you have there at your facility. So. Well, th thank you so much. It really is a privilege and thank you to us steel for helping us have a healthy environment that supports both Eagles and peregrines. That just blows my mind that, um, so thank you for that. And holy cow, USS4 <laughs> is a girl. And uh, we'd all we'd all been wondering, but um, so USS4 has a smaller, smaller foot, but that classic deep beak and boy, what a what an amazing, beautiful bird. Now, one thing I would offer to you, Don, is that sometimes when we have eagles that are in extended care, it can be nice to have a nickname rather than just calling them a number all the time. And I'm wondering if you have a nickname to suggest that so, might be a little bit more personal than four. <laughs> so, you know, we started down this uh, gender reveal, you know, I came up with as all proud parents, a couple different names and we were asking on chat and we went from, you know, I personally said Dawn, you know, cause you could go either <laughs> way, Dawn or Dawn. Uh, but unfortunately, that didn't make it. Um, and we were talking about for a male, it was going to be Steel or Steely for Steely McBean. And if it was a female, which it is, we're going with Rosie the Riveter. So that is our, you know, um, you, you know, with uh, the mascot of the, the females, hardworking steel worker. And so I'd be honored if you would call um, our USS4 Rosie. That sounds fantastic. Rosie, Rosie it is. And... Um, as we get updates or um, get any fun videos, we'll be sure to share those on our Facebook page and we'll be circling back periodically, Don. So I, I thank you. So and much. I know that you, you know, um, it's more about just the care and the love you have for Eagles. However, my job side is to for donations and, and, and we are going to post uh, an Amazon, I think, site that, you know, if for wish list, I think that you have out there. Uh, I know the Hayes family is also involved. I know they get the wish list and they do a picnic that we're going to be going to and, and we'll, we'll bring stuff up for you as well as HARP, with, which is the Humane Animal Rescue of Pittsburgh. And uh, But there's an opportunity for donations and so forth because I know you're not funded through the federal or state and everything that you do is just funded through donations. So anything that we could do to help you, um, we will you know appreciate. And, and like I said, U.S. Steel is going to be donating as well to your, your facility as well as heart. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, tell um, Rosie that uh, we all said hi. <laughs> I, I sure will. And thank you to everybody for your interest and your care and your good wishes and your prayers. And for those who um, have been able to donate, thank you again. We'll be sure to um, mail out. Thanks to anybody that uh, we're able to contact sometimes 
with things ordered through Amazon, sometimes the distributors don't always give us the information about who sent it. So um, if we don't have that information, just please know our deep gratitude um, from all the volunteer staff and our patients. Um, but for everybody, thank you for your interest and your good thoughts for Rosie. Hmm. See you. Thank take you. care. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.